Welcome to Choir Talks. Today we put a bow on 1 John as we finish uh, with chapter 5, the last chapter today. You can listen to the last several podcast episodes if you want to catch back up on the letter written uh, that we call 1 John, or better yet, just read the letter and uh, ask the Lord to speak to you. The letter, in my opinion, is primarily focused on defining what it looks like to be an authentic believer. And I know I've said that every, every week for the last several weeks because it just comes through every chapter here in 1 John. And so um, today we'll see some of that also. John is pushing back against false teachers, inauthentic believers that were among the disciples in that early day. He's pushing back against inauthentic teachings and against people that were robbing the believers of their confidence that, that they were truly following Christ. So he writes this, this letter of encouragement to help them see a vision of what it looks like to be an authentic believer. So today we finished chapter 5, and today we're going to see three things that he says that authentic believers can know. Three things that authentic believers know. First of all um, is that Jesus is God. Number one, authentic believers know that Jesus is God. He's been saying this throughout the letter, um, but here's an in case you missed it right at the end of his letter. He writes this, Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And then in the next few verses, he details out how each part of the Trinity affirms that Jesus is God. First of all, in uh, verse 6, he says that, that the life of Jesus affirms that Jesus is God. And then he, he also said the same thing in chapter 1. So he's bookending his letter by saying that Jesus' life shows that he is God. He mentions the Spirit um, in uh, verse 8. The Spirit uh, testifies and is in agreement that Jesus is God. And then he says that God the Father uh, gives testimony that he is and that he is the Son of God, that Jesus is God. Uh, you might also remember from the Gospel of John that John records at the baptism of Jesus that, um, that God speaks from heaven and said, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. So authentic believers have assurance and know that Jesus is God. All right, here's the second thing. In verse 11, authentic believers have eternal life. Here's how it sounds in verse 11. And this is the testimony God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. In the Gospel of John, John says that his purpose in writing, at the end of that Gospel, he says this, uh, I've written these things so that you may believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and by believing that you may have life in his name. By the way, that life is the life of Jesus or eternal life. So the Gospel of John written to unbelievers so that they may come to faith and believe. Now, in the end of this letter, he writes a similar thing. He says, I write these things to you who believe, already believe, in the name of the Son of God so that you will know that you have eternal life. So written to believers who are already following Jesus, authentic believers, so that they can know and be assured in confidence that this eternal life resides in them. All right, here's the third thing that uh, believers, authentic believers, can know according to 1 John. Uh, starting in verse 14, it sounds like this. This is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And we, if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of him. All right, here's the third truth. God answers prayer. Jesus is the Son of God. Authentic believers have eternal life. And now thirdly, God answers prayer. Now this is definitely a bold statement that we, we can ask of God and and believe that we have what we ask for. That's, that's intimidating. It's it's difficult for us as believers to to believe that and to have faith that that's true. Do we have that much faith? Will will God really answer us every time? Is does that um, diminish prayer to just sort of a spiritual vending machine where you put in a prayer and and get out a request? Uh, uh, it, it's a difficult thing for believers to believe. 
But John is writing this so that we can have confidence. Notice that word right here. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. Um, he wants us uh, to, to know and believe that we can approach God and he will not reject us or refuse us. And why is that? Well, if you look back at the context, those verses we just read said that Jesus is the Son of God and that we have life in him. So we can come boldly before the Father, not because of who we are, but because we are in Christ. And because we're in Christ, we have standing before him to, to approach God. Um, standing is a, a sort of a legal term also. Um, many of you know that my wife is a judge. I probably should have uh, asked her to get a, a formal uh, definition of that word, but in my understanding, standing in a legal sense means that you have a legitimate right to appear to, before a judge to make a request of that judge. So that's who we are in Christ. Because we have the Son of God in our lives and, and have his life, now we have standing to come before the Father and, and expect and know that he hears us and he answers. So that's the two-part promise. He, he says that he hears us and that he answers us. This is the confidence we have approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of him. Backing up into the Gospel of John, here's some of the things that John says uh, that Jesus had, had said, some ways that he has quoted Jesus. Jesus said, I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. And again, in chapter 15 of John, it says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. But I want you to notice there is a qualification here. Reading it again, it says, uh, this is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything, here's the phrase, according to his will. Now that's a qualification. But it's a qualification that makes total sense to you if you've read through the book of 1 John. As he has described to us what an authentic believer looks like and acts like, the authentic believer is someone who is focused on obeying and understanding the commands of God. An authentic believer is someone who loves and is focused on the needs of others and giving sacrificially toward them. An authentic believer has the life of Christ in him, and an authentic believer follows the Holy Spirit. Those are four truths that he has taught us in the first four chapters. So, uh, when an authentic believer comes before the Father practicing those truths, uh, then an authentic believer uh, will begin to pray according to the will of God. Now, we usually think of prayer as sort of an exercise in how we can move the heart of God or change the mind of God so that he will give us our requests. But prayer is really much more of, of having a conversation with God and as we have a conversation with him, we begin to come in line with who, what his heart is and what his desires are. And we begin to come in line with the will of the Father. So don't be uh, intimidated to pray or to ask God because you think that you're unable to know the will of the Father. That's really the opposite of what John is teaching us here. He wants you to have confidence that if you are an authentic believer seeking the heart of God, trying to obey him and find his heart, that you will begin to pray in the name of Jesus, asking uh, according to the will of the Father, and you will can have confidence that he hears you and that he answers you. Pray so that you will understand and be a part of the heaven work that God is already doing around you in you and through you. So again, here's three things that an authentic believer knows. Jesus is the Son of God. You as an authentic believer have eternal life from this moment forward and that God hears you and answers your prayer according to his will. Have a great day.